Cowell, who grew up in the Bay Area and was very, very much influenced by hearing lots of music of, for example, the Chinese opera and very much influenced also by the time he spent with a kind of utopian community up in the Redwoods and the kind of pageants that they put up there based on Celtic legends. And one of the things he came up with was the idea that music would be made of more materials than just single notes or chords. And he was a pioneer in using electronics and altered instruments, many things. And he certainly uh, is very famous for having invented the idea of the tone cluster. So that instead of a, a note or even two notes, this was a, a great splodge of notes, which he in many aggressive pieces played you know, with his fists or even his whole forearm. And this piano concerto was a piece played by him because he became a very famous concert artist going around the entire world playing these very startling pieces that he wrote. And this was a piece designed for him to play with major symphony orchestras that he did. It's a big, romantic, swashbuckling concerto, except that the themes are all based on combinations of, of you know, very, well, two-fisted, two-armed uh, cragginess. I don't think there's any piano concerto quite like it. And Cowell did that sort of, he loved to do sort of one-of-a-kind experiments that could never be that can never be repeated, that, that maybe you would never want to repeat in some cases. But uh, this piece is really um, fascinating. There's a tremendous amount of uh, sort of unusual, crazy techniques. And so I was thinking I need to get some oven mitts to, <laughs> to protect myself. You know, obviously he's doing these clusters to do, to evoke a kind of different instrument, to use the piano to evoke certain kinds of percussion instruments, or a whole world of sounds that are outside the Western tradition of, of music and, and, and quite beautiful, even though it's a lot of clusters. But the piece is uh, fun, swashbuckling, outrageous, and it takes a very special spirit, such as uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Denk, to really put this over with the fervor with which it was meant. Beethoven was a maverick, right? Until we put him on the wall and he became, became this idol and then, you know, he was obviously a tremendous maverick. For me, all the great classical music is, is mavericky. And, and the real problem is when these, pat when these patterns become, you know, ossified or when you begin to take the tradition as something and try to fill the old template with new wine instead of trying to imagine why, try to f create a whole new template to begin with. And that's the 20th century music that I'm really interested in. And they begin to ask the fundamental question, what, why am I even you know, paying attention to an artwork? And what is the whole purpose of it? And Cage and Ives and Cowell, a lot of these people really asked those questions very profoundly. And they weren't content to, to do the classical music, spiced up old classical music with dissonance. They wanted to recreate something from the foundation. I do like the kind of wacky, confrontational aspect of it. And I was looking for somebody who could really take this on, who could champion this. And I enlisted Jeremy's help in doing this. We've played, of course, so many pieces together. And Jeremy's mastery of music of this period, particularly his incredible recordings of Charles Ives' music, has really been a revelation. So I knew he could really tackle this and do great things with it. And we're having a great deal of fun with it. And I think the audience will too.